this is the Honor 10 Lite. I really like this phone. And if you have seen my top budget phones list of 2018, I think you will know how I feel about this phone. So let's get on with the review. But before we do that, I need some validation. I need some subs, damn it. So subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. And if you're on Facebook, then press the like button. Anyways, let's start the review. The reason why I'm talking about the camera first is because the camera in this phone surprised me the most. Mostly in budget phones, I don't really expect a good camera. Especially in a phone like this, it's a pretty dirty phone. But the camera is actually pretty good. There is a 13 megapixel primary lens with a 2 megapixel depth sensor. And on the front there is a 24 megapixel lens. The thing that surprised me is how much detail the camera captures. As you can see, it captures quite a lot of detail. And the clarity is really good. And these photos look really vivid. EMUA has quite a lot of great features when it comes to the camera specifically. I really like the portrait mode and here it's just as good. The edge detection is crazy good and overall I think the portrait mode makes the photos look really good. There's AI scene detection as well. Basically what this means is that the phone automatically detects the scenery and applies the best settings for that particular scenario. In the front camera you can customize how you look, you can alter your features. Personally, I'm not much into that. I mean, when you look like this, I don't think any alteration can fix that. But if you are a little bit self-conscious about your looks, I think you'll like this feature. Overall, I'm happy with the camera. For the price, it's a really good camera with great features. After the camera, the next thing that I really like in this phone is its build quality. The front has a 6.2 inch display and the bezels are really tiny. There's only a camera cutout instead of a notch and it looks really good. For such a low price phone, they are giving a really great bezel-less look. The side and the back are made of plastic but it's that trendy design that's very popular these days with this reflective back. I like phones that stand out and this phone clearly does even though it is plastic. The phone also has heft so you feel like you are holding something of high quality. If I had any complaints about the build quality, it would be the port selection. It has a micro USB port and I think it's way overdue that we finally move on to USB Type-C in budget phones. Mostly all high-end phones have USB Type-C and to be honest it's a pain carrying all those different cables for all my different gadgets. So overall the build quality in this phone is really good, I am quite impressed by the front, super tiny bezels, a camera cutout and a very little price and the reflective back stands out. The display in this phone is a 1080p panel, so there is quite a lot of clarity. However, in terms of colors, I'm not really impressed with the display. The colors don't look as vibrant as other phones I've used. They look a little bit washed out. Maybe it's just in my unit, but I wish our display was a little bit more vibrant. I don't think that's much of a problem, it's only visible when you compare it with a different phone. And there are phones that are more expensive than this and still giving a 720p display. So I'm happy that at least it's a 1080p panel. Overall the display is decent. If you want to use this for watching content, it's not gonna be too bad of an experience. I just wish it was a more vivid panel. In terms of performance, the phone is packing a Kirin 710. And just like the Nova 3i and the Y9, both phones carrying the same processor, the performance in this phone is really good. However, one advantage this phone has over those phones is that this phone comes with Android 9 and EMUI 9, so you get more features than those phones. Mainly you get guest navigation. Before this phone, I used guest navigation on the Mate 20 Pro. You can see that video where I go much more in detail. But suffice to say, here on this phone, guest navigation is just as good as the Mate 20 Pro. That's a phone that is 4 times the price of this phone. I love guest navigation on any phone when it's smooth. This makes the phone feel so much more responsive. Everything feels fluid. Overall, I like the performance in this. The apps open really quickly and there's not much lag. However, one complaint I have with the performance is that this variant that I have only comes with 3GB of RAM. And for now, 3GB is workable, but if you are looking for a phone for 2 years, I don't think 3GB of RAM would be enough. Apps are becoming more and more extensive. 
and I think you need at least 4GB of RAM to run them properly. So if you are looking for a phone for long term, I will say get the 4GB one at least. There's a 3400mAh battery and I think that's a decent capacity. You can get around 1 day of usage and that is a little bit lower than other phones but considering the price of this phone, I don't think it's much of a problem. So that was it. That was pretty much everything that I like and dislike about the phone. Overall, I really like this phone. I think that this is one of the best phones you can get at the least price. I mean for 36,000 rupees, you get this very good looking phone with very small bezels. Yes, the display could be better and the battery could be better, but at this price, I'm not really complaining all that much. And if you're looking for a phone without spending a lot of money, then this is the phone you should get. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.